Melanie Harris, and I'm the performing arts teacher for the sixth grade class. It's an amazing class. We've already had one performance, one group went at three o'clock, and now happily ever after we'll be performing in one week, one week from today, we'll be performing in the Performing Arts Center. The middle school has a choral program, so sixth graders will lose all the costumes and they will begin dancing and singing for you next Thursday night at 7 p.m. in the packet is a free performance. So enjoy, this is Happily Ever After. I hereby, <laughs> I hereby call it a special meeting of the Royal Princesses to order. I understand from this paper that you wish to unionize. Is that correct? Yes. yes. Have you appointed a spokeswoman to speak for all of you? I am that person, Your Highness, although we all wish to be heard. Very well. Is there anyone here to represent the assorted Prince Charming here? Ready? Willing and able here, sire. Excellent. Let's get started. Snow White, you may begin. Thank you. As you are aware, we have all had traumatic past. Poison apples, poison spinning wheels, forced imprisonment, evil stepmothers. Well, you get the picture. I, for one, cannot even look at an apple without getting the wings. We feel that our princes have taken advantage of our good nature so far. So we are here to petition the court for more equality in our lives. Our well, princes seem to think that because they rescued us and took us to live in their castles, we should be endlessly grateful and expect nothing more out of life. Well, Snow, or should I say Miss White, we all have a traumatic past for you to live go down. I, for one, spent ten years as a frog, something that my wife will never let me forget. Do you know that she constantly makes fun of the lily pads outside of the castle? She thinks I should have a moat. Well, that is all very interesting, I'm sure, but we are not here to discuss you, sire. All right, let us continue. I would like you to hear Rapunzel's story first. Dear kingship, I have a simple request. All I would like from you is permission to get a haircut. I have no problem with this request. Let's say you, Prince Charming, eh? Your Highness. Prince Charming B, Rapunzel's husband, is my brother. When he first met Rapunzel, she had long, beautiful, flowing hair that had never been cut. That is why he fell in love with her. Ever since her evil mother cut her braids off, he has been waiting very patiently for her hair to grow again. It is a simple request in exchange for rescuing her from the tower. Is that a Rapunzel, your request must be denied. But your lordship, he wants me to grow back my braids and use them as an elevator to get to the tower of the castle. He thinks there are too many stairs to climb. Do you have any idea how much that hurts? I suffered from migraines for years when my mother climbed up my brains. I was so grateful when she finally cut them off. Not to mention having to wash and dry that amount of hair. I do not want to live my life as a slave to a hairdo. I see your point. You see what I mentioned is there would be a few little dogs? This problem would never cross I was so happy during my frog days. Oh well, back to business. I'll have to roll with it. I'll take this on the right side. Thank you, graciousness. Well, less forge on. There's the leapfrog tournament that I'm judging in the hour. Who's next? I am your cute toad king. That's <laughs> too froggy. That's too froggy. I'm sick of being tested, sire. I'm sick of living my life under a microscope. All the little springs behind my back. Is she a princess? Or isn't she? Well, I passed all the tests, didn't I? My education, bearing, and breeding bears me out. Sire, be honest. Am I not lovely and a joy to be around? Didn't I lie awake all night with a simple pea under 20 mattresses? Not to mention sleeping 20 feet up in the air does not make for a restful night's sleep. Put all that behind you. You are the princess. You have been accepted. That's what I thought. But just last week, my prince put a can of Coca-Cola in front of me, along with a can of Pepsi. He then blindfolded me and ordered me to take the Pepsi challenge. He said that only a true princess could taste a difference. Mm -hmm. Now I ask you, is that supportive? I think not. You, sire, would never treat a princess with so little respect. That is very true. What say you, prince? Pia's husband, Prince Charming C, is also my brother. You have no idea how many women came knocking at his door claiming to be princesses. They had letters of introduction, an entourage of servants, were richly dressed, yet all proved to be false. When Pia came in that long night ago, she had nothing, no proof whatsoever. In fact, she looked like something the cat would drag in. Yet, my dear brother took her in and arranged for her to be tested. After she passed all the tests, he married her. What greater proof of 
his love and support is there, if for once in a blue moon he feels like having a little fun, giving her a test to amuse himself. Well, what harm can that do? I don't see the harm. Now, Mr. King, you just mentioned you tire of having to live down your fraud past. It has not been easy being criticized and scorned. Has it? Hmm. I also see your point. This, too, will have to be taken mm -hmm. under advisement. And we'll, we'll leave it. Next, let's speed this up, please. Oh, one last thing, sire. Not to influence your decision, of course. But leapfrog tournaments are my favorite thing in the whole wide world. And if ever another judge is needed, I would be thrilled to just leap right in. Very kind of you. Next. I am next, sire. I am Cinderella. Prince Charming A is my husband. I feel a bit nervous testifying in front of him. So stated, please continue. As you can see, I am well prepared to clean. I cleaned all day and half the night. I can't stop. I would like to, but I just can't. I would like the prince to hire some turbans to take the burden off of me, but he refuses. He thinks that since I spent the first half of my life as a servant, I should continue to do the same now. He has fired all the servants and has left all maintenance of the castle up to me. It is 200,000 square feet of cobwebs and dirt. The walls are rotting for moisture. I can't keep up with it and I can't take a break. I walk in my sleep with a broom. I haven't left my house since the wedding day, and in one year, I haven't finished cleaning the first floor of my castle. This is worse than living with a stepmother. This is a serious accusation. What say you, Prince? I had to fire all the servants here, Grace. None of their work satisfied her. One went through the windows. The floors never sparkled enough. Then she complained about the food, not nutritious, not garnished properly. In a fit of anger, I told her I would fire them all to see if she could do a better job. And for the result? She does a much better job, sire. Our fields have earned a four-star rating, and the first floor of the castle smells like a pine forest. I can't wait until she gets down on the second floor. Why should I deny her use of natural talents? I quite agree. Cinderella, in your spare time, could you possibly help out my castle? <sighs> Seems a little thing. Next, I am the sire. I'm Aurora, although my critics call me Sleeping Beauty. Uh, yes, I'm familiar with your story. It is one of my favorites. What is your complaint? Well, sire, after 100 years of sleeping, I'm insomnia. I just can't sleep anymore. Well, surely you can't blame that, Prince. No, sire, that is not what I blame on my prince. It's the constant little jobs he has me doing during the night so that I don't waste any time. Oh, he is constantly leaving me paperwork to finish with little notes attached to it. Dear Aurora, if you happen to be up at 2 a.m., please finish my speech to a loyal subject. Prince, things like that. He sees he can't budget his time very well. And sees fit to burden my already sleepless nights. I'm very sorry, sire. I'm very tired. Prince Charming, do you Prince? Certainly, sire. Prince Charming, please. Aurora's husband is also my brother. The burden of running a kingdom lies heavily with him. He does not see the harm in letting his wife assist him when she is already awake and able. Yes, I see it. Another problem that would be solved if we were frogs. Frogs need very little sleep. I rule that Aurora, Aurora, has a very good part of the rule of sleep. I do like you have to go. Is there anything else? There is still me, Your Highness. Oh, yes. Yes, right. Please proceed. Thank you. My prince, Sire. I'd like to close down all the mines in the kingdom and switch the castle business to apple orchards. He's very concerned about the earth. Admirable. I agree with you, Prince. Well, Mr. Anstidian King, you must not know my story very well. My beloved dwarves who rescued me in my time of need are miners. Their livelihoods, is, livelihoods would be destroyed. And if you had a close call with an apple, you would not appreciate being surrounded by them for the rest of your life. I can see it now. The castle will be filled with apple pie, apple cider, apple muffins, apple butter. Why, the list is endless. What say you, Prince? I suppose the husband is also related to you. No, I believe I have run out of brothers. I am at a loss here. Very well. I will retire to my chambers and see if I can come up with an equitable compromise in the next three minutes. I'm pressed for time. Prince, may I speak with you? Certainly, sire. Well, how do you think we did? I don't know. It doesn't help to have, I don't know, it's going away. It doesn't help to have sleeping beauty. Here, sleep. The king will not take it seriously. Will somebody please wake her up? That seems too cruel. And it doesn't help for cause any to have you flooding with the king like a common subject. Of course 
opposite helped. We are princesses who get what we want through our beauty and charm. It's not like we were educated for a career or anything. Besides, we asked him a very simple thing. It's not like we were demanding the right to vote. Mm, the right to vote. Aurora, Aurora, what did you say? Hmm, I was so refreshed. I had the most wonderful dream. I mean, idea. Imagine if all the women in the kingdom had the same rights as me. Imagine if we could vote, if we could be queens instead of measly princesses. Why, I run my husband's business as it is, although my work is never acknowledged, because I do it all in the middle of the night. Uh, I would love to have the same power as my prince. Why, then I would test him like crazy. I wonder how he would like that. <laughs> but I don't see how any of this could be accomplished. They denied our simple requests. Imagine how they would react to all of this. We don't need their permission. That's the point. This kingdom is overrun with women. They all settled here, hoping one of the princes would rescue them. Our stories encourage them. Why, we could all band together and accomplish great things. But I truly love my prince. I don't want to antagonize him. I just want to be a bit more reasonable. Of course. I've gone on and on about the work around here. I mean, really talk, not complain. Have you ever thought about negotiating? I'm not sure what you mean. She means that although you need help, you're not truly ready to hand over the job to someone else. Well, of course I would. If I could train to help myself and show them how to, get, how to get things done right. Yes, but did you tell him that? Maybe not in so many words. Princes are dense. You need so many words. <laughs> and Rapunzel, have you ever sat down and talked to your prince? I wanted a haircut. Yes, but did you tell him why? Did you tell him about the years of people climbing up and down your braids like a tree trunk? <laughs> we are going in circles here. The king will be back any moment with his decision. Are we ready what he has to say, or is there more at stake here? There is more at stake here. Then let's figure out what we want and provide a united front. I want more to say about me. Me too. Me too. Me too. Then here we are. Let us tell the king when he returns that we want a voice in what goes on around here. Let me bring it. All right. <clears throat> <sighs> well, the prince and I have had a heart-to-heart -heart talk, and we believe that we can come to an annual agreement to cheer the man. Forget it, frog. <laughs> king. Excuse me? I'm sorry, but we want a voice in the kingdom. In short, we want the vote. What? Perfect. What did you say? Ribbit? You heard her. We no longer want to be mere figureheads. We want more say in our lives. Ribbit, I can hear you in my ears. Ribbit, this is wonderful. Why? Prince, the witch who put a spell on me assured I could return to my frog state if ever there was a rebellion of princesses in the kingdom. Ribbit. <laughs> Okay, Mr. Prince, can we? 